Good morning. Lots of very difficult acts to follow today. Uh, I'm glad to be with all of you as we begin this first full week of our spring together and gradually find our footing and the pace we'll keep between now and early June. While spring at Brooks can sometimes feel a lot more like winter than summer, there is no disputing the fact that the days are getting longer, the temperatures are getting warmer, and this beautiful campus we are so fortunate to occupy will come to life with vibrant colors that are in full bloom by the time the class of 2023 gets up for prize day just eight weeks from today. If you've lived through a Brooks School spring in the past, you know well that the days move faster at this time of year than they do at any other. I'm hoping we'll make the most of every moment we have together. I want to begin today by joining Reverend Afori and thanking the many who contributed to organizing and then delivering our beloved Community Day experience on Friday. Thank you to Reverend Afori, to Dr. Afori, to Mr. Chapman, to Mr. Jones, Ms. Bender, Ms. Wielden, Dr. Brucci, Dr. D'Angelo, the beloved community ambassadors, the dining hall, our entire student affairs leadership team, school leaders, our impressive and talented guests, and all of you for jumping into a day of exploring some new ideas and approaches to learning with and from one another. It's hard to get everything we hope for on days like Friday into an 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. window of time, and I'm hopeful that much of what we thought about and experienced together will continue to generate thought and conversation well into the balance of the spring. And when I think about the balance of the spring, the two months that we will continue to be in session together this year, I get excited about all that we will do together. Here is a preview of coming attractions. Much of our time in chapel this spring will be spent hearing from members of the class of 2023 with what are certain to be a series of memorable reflections on time spent here that will give us much to think about. I've been through a number of rounds of sixth former speaking in chapel over the years, and all of them contribute to our school's ever-expanding story. It is an oral tradition that connects you to Brooksians who stood in the same place and shared their own story years and decades ago. I love that connection. We'll host a number of events over these eight weeks, many of them centered here in chapel, including two memorial services, one for an emeritus teacher and the other for a Brooks School classmate of Mr. Nam and Miss Reese, who died far too young. We'll hold our annual Kippy Little Day service just one week from today, remembering a teacher and crew coach who passed away while coaching Brooks School rowers on the Schuylkill River in Philadelphia nearly 40 years ago. We'll celebrate this year's cum laude inductees with their families and friends a bit later in this month with the spotlight appropriately placed on academic excellence and achievement, the focal point of why we are all here. We'll host grandparents and special friends for a day at the end of April with all of you sharing your school with people whom I suspect are some of the biggest supporters in your life. It is hard to do wrong in the eyes of grandparents. We'll have alums here from the classes of 1953, 1968, 1973, and all kinds of years in between and since on campus for events and opportunities to visit with one another at a place that continues to matter to them in ways that we hope and think you will visit with one another here, 25, 50, in 70 years from now. We'll experience Brookstock, the prom, which is unfortunately not on a boat, the spring play, countless athletic games, with the majority of you doing your very best to represent the school well as you build team experiences that will hold within you well beyond this spring. We'll make it through the various allergy seasons that are looming close in on our final week of classes, celebrate the amazing class of 2023, navigate our way through EOLs, and then it will be summer. And all of this will happen before you know it. Do not blink. This look ahead, mindful of the fullness of our calendar, the scarcity of time, and the experience I have with Brook School Springs that always move so quickly, has me thinking about anything and everything that can slow it all down just a bit 
and allow us to be present. Much easier said than done for me in my own life. Yet I read an article in the New York Times recently that resonated with me, even inspired me. And I'd like to close by sharing the thrust of that article with you this morning. The title of the article is, Whatever the Problem, It's Probably Solved by Walking. And it was written by Andrew McCarthy. The title grabbed me for whatever reason, and the author's name rang a bell. I quickly remembered him as an actor who was in a number of films when I was in high school and college, and perhaps the John Hughes winter term class saw him in Pretty in Pink, which was released in 1986, the year I graduated from high school. In any event, remembering who Andrew McCarthy was piqued my curiosity even further. And I then learned that he has become a writer in addition to an actor and had walked the full 500 mile stretch on the Camino de Santiago for a second time with his son last year. The same ancient pilgrimage route a number of you spent some time on during winter term, a route I hope to walk someday myself. The article is full of historical figures, authors, and poets singing the praises of walking. Here are some examples. Hippocrates said, walking is man's best medicine, and went on to say, if you are in a bad mood, go for a walk. If you are still in a bad mood, go for another walk. Soren Kierkegaard wrote, I know of no thought so burdensome than one cannot walk away from it. Charles Dickens added, if I could not walk far and fast, I think I should explode and perish. The Welsh poet W.H. Davies wrote, now shall I walk or shall I ride? Ride, pleasure said. Walk, joy replied. Thomas Mann shared, thoughts come clearly while one walks. J.K. Rowling observed, there is nothing like a nighttime stroll to give you ideas. 20th century novelist Elizabeth von Arnhem concluded, walking is the perfect way of moving if you want to see into the life of things. McCarthy notes that until I went to Spain with the sole mission of crossing the country on foot, I often considered walking a waste of my time. He goes on to say the Camino altered my place in the world. Walking was no longer the slowest way to get somewhere and was more than a means to an end. It was the event itself. Now, I can't claim to be some kind of super experienced walker. I've not walked the Camino, as a number of you have, nor have I hiked in ways that many of you have. But I can say that walking on this campus, even for just minutes at a time in some cases, has in large part been what McCarthy and all he cites in the article to be. Time to think, time to get away, time to reset, time to see my own world differently, time to feel more present. I don't know that this necessarily makes walking spiritual time for me, but I suspect it might. Regardless, I can't help but feel the need to make a pitch for the wonders of walking this morning, inspired by this article, inspired by our campus, inspired by the coming of spring, inspired by my hope to be present, and inspired by the possibilities we have right in this very place to get out and take one walk after another and reap the rewards of that time well spent. I'll finish with a couple of passages from Andrew McCarthy's piece because he and his many walking companions say it far better than I can. McCarthy writes, the great naturalist John Muir keenly observed, I only went out for a walk and going out, I found, was really going in. Has anyone ever emerged from ambling through nature for an hour and regretted their improved state of being? Perhaps this is what that dedicated walker Henry David Thoreau was referring to when he wrote, I took a walk in the woods and came out taller than the trees. So the secret is out there. It's under the leaves on the trail on our very campus. It's right there on the sidewalk. Spring has sprung. Lace up. Here's to a great spring. Thank you.